We have uncovered a fair amount of intel on the Black Tusk. You might have many questions. Where did the Black Tusk come from? What is their objective? And who is their leader? In this intel brief, we're attempting to answer those questions. Let's see how far we get. I want to start off with a disclaimer. At the time of creating this intel brief, information from the upcoming updates isn't available yet, meaning I'm aware that some questions will remain at the end of this video and might be answered at a later time. As more intel becomes available, I will create new intel briefs. The Black Tusk are a large secretive private military contractor, or PMC for short, with ties to the United States government. They are disciplined and highly organized and their unparalleled equipment makes them the biggest threat we have ever faced. Their ranks are comprised of elite soldiers that have a long history of working with the government. Although they operate on an unknown agenda, it seems their primary objective is to neutralize the division and take control of Washington DC. Coffee, right? Fuck if I know. I don't drink this shit for pleasure. Trust me, it's good. You should savor it. Might be your last chance. <sighs> no, it still tastes like dirt. What's happening in New York is just the beginning. Yeah, no shit. I want you to put together a team. I already have a team. A bigger team, more diversified. For what? For whatever it takes. We have an opportunity here, a golden one. But we have to be smart and we have to act fast. So no choir boys is what you're saying. I'm saying scoundrels and scum, all right? Killers and cutthroats. I don't give a shit as long as they follow orders and can get shit done. All right, I'll get to work. It'll work fast, the end is fucking nigh. Barden Schaefer, at that point already employed by the Black Tusk, had been ordered by his commanding officer to create his own team, a Black Tusk Specialist Unit, or BTSU. His team needed to be ready for whatever it would take as a golden opportunity was about to present itself. One of the first people he went to had a very familiar voice. Barden Schaefer, how are you still alive and kicking? Odessa Sawyer as I live and breathe. Well, Mama always said I was a cockroach. I assume she meant I was tough to kill. I doubt it. Who are your friends? I might do introductions after you've heard me out. Oh, so hush hush. What are you these days? OGA? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I've got a new employer, and we're hiring. Good base plus hazard pay and bonuses, and you'd be working with quality people. Yeah? Now who would I be working for? People who want what's best for this country. Uh-huh. That's a one-time deal, Odessa. Things are happening fast. You don't want to miss this bus. I swore an oath, and I'm sticking to it. Not something I'd expect a cockroach to understand. <laughs> well, that's a damn shame. You sure would be an asset. Be seeing you. I sure fucking hope not. <laughs> Schaefer managed to get the worst of the worst. His unit was comprised of the most elite operatives within the Black Tusk. Petrus Brenner, Mila Wyvenradek, Elijah Sumner, Ellis Galveston, and Jack Bonney. How's Bonnie fitting in? The others think he's a rabid fucking weasel. They aren't wrong. Yeah, well, you need to make it work. It'll work just fine. I ain't yet met a Bronco I can't break. How soon will the unit be ready to deploy then? It depends on the assignment. We could be ready tomorrow if we're just cracking heads, but more complicated targets will require custom training. Look, nothing fancy for now, but there's a lot of groundwork to lay. Obstacles to be knocked down. Knocking shit down is my specialty. Yeah, I know it is, Bar, but you be ready to move out in a week, and no fuck-ups. You have my personal guarantee. At this point, it's clear that Schaefer has a commanding officer, who we don't know the identity of. But even his commanding officer is not the top dog. Boss says the situation is legit. Then it's legit, but that don't mean any of this is doable. These are some very powerful individuals, apparently. Capable of pulling strings on folks that don't even realize they're puppets. Pretty much guarantees a double cross, then. Guys like us are a loose end for people who don't want loose ends. Uh, our boss has some thoughts about that. Thinks we'll have sufficient leverage to come out okay. I think he's envisioning us as the Praetorian Guard of the new dynasty. 
Well, he's ambitious, so I'll give him that. Don't forget, we have ridiculous firepower. That does tip the scales a bit. There are two things to take away here. Firstly, Schaefer is not only outranked by his supervisor, who he is talking to, but he too answers to his superior. Secondly, the Black Tusk, both Schaefer, his supervisor and their boss, are contracted by a shadowy organization. An organization consisting of powerful individuals that can manipulate people without them even knowing. Their exact objective is unknown, but it appears they want to create a new dynasty with the Black Tusk as the Praetorian Guards. Outside of the capital, the Black Tusk already begun their assault on the rest of the continent, taking over settlements and cities. As the green poison kept spreading chaos over the capital, country and continent, the Black Tusk set their eyes on Washington DC. It wasn't going to be an easy feat. First, commanding officer briefed his unit on their task. Our primary task is to reclaim the capital from the hostile forces that presently control it. These include operatives of the Strategic Homeland Division. Now considered a rogue agency that must be brought to heel. Civilian militias and remnants of the three dominant factions active within the area of operations must disarm and submit to the rule of law, or they will be classified as insurgent groups and dealt with accordingly. We have seen little evidence that anyone in this shithole of a city intends to play nice. So I advise that you shoot first, and shoot last. <laughs> it is notoriously easier to negotiate. This required a plan, as on the one hand they had to deal with us and the civilian militia, and on the other hand with the three competing factions, Hyenas, Outcasts and True Sons. Hyenas? That's what they call themselves, don't ask me. Huh, they're essentially an alliance of gangs led by a council of representatives from the toughest subgroups. Federation of Assholes. Pretty much. What about the True Sons? Former JTF commander went bad started his own private army. They've been the dominant group in DC for a while, when it comes to territory and firepower. And the outcasts? Crazies. That's very incisive, Brenner. They survived a forced quarantine, got fucked over pretty bad. They're pissed about it. Now they're on the rampage. Typical terror-style tactics, mostly. Dabbling in biological warfare. What the fuck is wrong with people? Like I said, crazies. Well, they're all the division's problem for the time being, but uh, maybe we can destabilize the situation a bit? Hyenas are probably the best bet. Feed them some material support, they'll be a thorn in everybody's side, and they aren't organized enough to present a serious problem in the long term. Good recommendation, Eli. I'll talk to the boss. Their plan was to let us deal with the three remaining factions. This reduced our numbers and resources while we took care of the competition. It's very smart. On top of that, the Black Tusk supplied the hyenas with weapons and equipment to stir up more trouble. An uneasy alliance that benefited the Black Tusk in the long run. There was one part of the plan in taking control of DC. The Black Tusk still needed to deal with us, but not without dealing with our advantages first. 
we have to assume there were no survivors. So what does that mean for us? A new plan and a new enemy. Division? Bingo. Then we need to do something about their advantages. That's the new plan. Where are we supposed to get that kind of intel? We already have it. I got a list of key targets right here. We're seriously going after the Division? We are seriously going after them, and we are going after them seriously. We are gonna gag them, blind them, kick them in the nuts, and steal their lunch money. This is gonna be fun. We finally agree on something. In a stand-up fight, a couple of Division agents ain't nothing to worry about. The problem is getting them in a stand-up fight. They're crafty fuckers. They've got a vulnerability? Same one anybody has when they're trying to protect something. There are also traitors among them that we can use to our advantage. The first step is to cripple their network. That'll expose them, make them weak. Then, we start picking them off. It was mentioned they might use rogue agents, which is perhaps where Aaron Keener might come in. However, we still don't know where Keener is. But, their primary objective was now to disable the Shade network. The unit was sent on field recon to gain intel on one of the key targets on Schaefer's list. Man, fuck these flies. Ain't there enough dead shit in this town to entertain them? <laughs> They're an indication of how bad you stick, Bonnie. <laughs> flies are more attracted to you than to dead things. Shut the hell up, both of you. Some of us are working here. You call staring at the motherfucking White House working? It's the opposite of working. Nobody ever said Savannah's is supposed to be fun. <laughs> At least nobody wasn't a fucking idiot. Bonnie doesn't think it's fun, but he's still a fucking idiot. All of you zipping. It's like being on a bus ride with a bunch of grade schoolers. They started it. I swear to God, Bonnie. Movement, South Lawn. Is it a division agent? Yep. I can just make out the wristwatch. Galveston, Bonnie, you're up. Find out where he goes. Are you really gonna stick me with stinking me fly bait here? Less moaning, more mobilizing. Go, go, go. That's so hilarious. After surveillance, the unit spotted a division agent leaving the safety of the White House. Galston and Bonnie were sent to follow the agent. I'm personally a fan of what you all do. Really, I am. I admire righteousness, even if I rarely partake. You're not getting anything from me. You see, that's where you're mistaken. Because one thing I can tell you about myself is that I'm persuasive. And I need to locate a certain bunker y'all are using to house some of your infrastructure. But I don't know anything about that. Then uh, I'm sorry in advance that you're gonna do a bit of suffering for no good reason. You're wasting your time! <laughs> <laughs> I gotta disagree with you there. What I'm doing is my job. And doing your job is never a waste of time. Especially if you do it with pride and conviction. Sure you don't want to save us both some unpleasantness? Galveston interrogated John Danvers, the division agent they spotted leaving the White House. His task was to gain information on a Shade safe house with the goal to blow up the servers and sabotage the Shade network. After Galveston and Bonnie returned to their unit with the information extracted from the agent, Brenner, Sumner and Bonnie were sent to investigate the safe house and blow up the servers to disable the Shade network. That was invigorating. Like going up against a team of fucking superheroes, you know what I mean? How about you shut up and get the charges planted? I'm working on it. And more working, less jabbering. Jesus, Brenner, why are you so penned up all the time? You need to unclench your ass cheeks. He would, but he's worried his batteries will fall out. <laughs> ah, fuck yourselves. <laughs> why are you always taking his side? I'm on the side of truth. Whatever. Let's just blow this fucking place so we can turn these superheroes into ordinary assholes, alright? The Black Tusk were successful in taking down the Shade Network and disabling comms nationwide. In response, many Ortega division coordinator in the White House sent out a distress signal calling any agents to help them in DC. At the same time, the BTSU planned to hunt down the surviving agents, but Shaver got word from his supervisor to call off the hunt. Changed. I need to back off the division. Back off how far? All the way. Well, that's pretty fucking far. But you got a problem with that, Bar? Well, no, boss. I'm just surprised as all. It's not like you to call off a hunt. Look, you know how it goes in this business. Today's enemies are tomorrow's friends. 
there's a way we can all come out of this as teammates, well, so much the better. You really think the division is gonna play ball? Doesn't seem unreasonable to expect them to keep doing their fucking jobs. That's not answering the question. You know how it goes in this business. With their primary objective completed, Shaver got briefed on their second one. What is this thing, exactly? It's a medication that cures viral sicknesses. In the way the antibiotics cure bacterial sicknesses. Probably would have been pretty useful seven or eight months ago. And there were a couple different broad spectrum drugs in clinical trials at the time. But mass production was out of the question. Even if they'd been fast tracked. So where did this one come from? Facility in Ann Arbor. We're chasing that down separately. Now your task is to recover those doses that were shipped to DC. What are we gonna do with them? God damn it, use your imagination, Bar. Who's not gonna sell their soul for a miracle cure? Shaver and his BTSU had a new objective. Retrieving the broad spectrum antiviral or BSAV that was hidden in DC. Its location was hidden, but any information on it was stored in a briefcase that President Ellis carried aboard Air Force One before it got shot down. It was unknown where both Ellis and the briefcase were, if they even survived at all. Soon enough, we managed to track down Ellis to the World Bank Group building, where he was being held hostage. We then extracted him to the White House and restored the Shade Network, gaining back our advantage. As explained in the President Brief, Alice was working with the Black Tusk as their vision for a brand new America co-aligned. Alice managed to persuade us to kick the three dominating factions out of their castles and retrieve the briefcase back to Alice. As finally the True Sons were defeated in the Capitol building, the Black Tusk began their invasion and Alice, alongside the briefcase, disappeared from the White House. The Black Tusk took over most of the old headquarters of the Hyenas, Outcasts and True Sons. In time, we managed to take them back and drive them back to their stronghold, Tidal Basin. At the same time, an unknown code was transmitted from below the White House. Bravo, Lima, Sierra, Echo, Charlie, Kilo, Uniform, Quebec, Echo, Papa, Echo, Lima, Tango, Yankee. But at the same time, it appeared Alice led the BTSU to the location of the BSAV, located in the bunker right below the White House. Looks that way, Chief. We just sent enough doses for the top brass. All right. Then let's get it somewhere safe. We'll hold it at Tidal Basin until I get word from the boss. Wyvern, this is your baby now. You take damn good care of it. Understood. Nothing gets near this container, not even a fucking squirrel, you got me? Understood. Give me that satellite phone. I want to share the news myself. Go on, give him your phone. Let him have his moment. Alice was confirmed to be working with the Black Tusk, but he doesn't appear to be their leader. Schaefer planned to extract the BSAV to their stronghold using a convoy of warhounds until they got word from higher up. This indicates that although Alice and the Black Tusk are working together, Alice is not their leader. The way Schaefer says, Let him have his moment. Sounds like they're using Alice, as if he is a puppet. After discovering this intel, we responded with the launch of an immediate offensive on Tidal Basin, preventing the convoys from reaching the hovercrafts, we managed to retrieve the BSAV. However, Radek, in an act of vengeance, activated rocket launchers atop the hovercraft to blow up the White House. Luckily, we managed to prevent the launch and eliminated Radek just in time. Still, this leaves many questions unanswered. What are the Black Tusk and Alice planning to do with the BSAV? Who is the organization that contracted the Black Tusk? And did they know about the creation of the Green Poison before it was unleashed on the world? As we find more intel, we'll make sure to brief you on it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the Faction Brief, I would like to ask you to like, dislike, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell to become part of the Masterminds HD community and notification squad. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter for daily updates and join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. Visit my Patreon page through the link in the description if you're interested in intel briefs on each faction with the summarized information from this video. To end the video, I have a question for you. What do you think is the plan of the shadowy organization Black Tusk and Alice to create the new dynasty they spoke of? Leave your answer in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. I'll talk to you in the next video on Discord or on Twitter. Peace out. Alert. Intercepting transmission. Let's not frighten the next lady. I wasn't planning on frightening her. Well, how about we don't shoot her either? Why? 
indulge me. Hey, if you're headed this way, you might want to take a detour. Why's that, darling? There's some gun-toting assholes setting up an ambush not far from here. Then how'd you get through? Carefully. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. What's your name? April. My favorite month of the year. Thanks, April. We'll exercise caution. It's safe back this way. We killed all the gun-toting assholes already. Great! Good luck! You take care now, April. See? She was nice. She saw us. So what? We're just a couple of guys that didn't try to kill her. Nothing especially remarkable about that. If you say so. Let's go murder those gun-toting assholes, she mentioned. It'll cheer you up.